Never since the gilded age of the early 20th century has the board game Monopoly seemed more like real life than today. And it doesn't look like the trend of America's increasing corporatocracy is going anywhere, especially after the announcement last week that two of the world's largest seed and chemical companies, Dow and DuPont, have decided to join forces. The merger will create a new company, Dow DuPont, original, which will be worth $130 billion. And just how much of the global market is this new company going to control? According to recent estimates, about 40% of America's corn seed and soybean markets and 17% of the global pesticide market. Monsanto, look out. Already, groups are decrying the merger as a terrible move for the American economy and one which antitrust groups are gearing up to resist. Critics are citing the potential loss of jobs that the merger will result in, as well as an increase in prices for food and a variety of other agricultural and chemical products used by everyday Americans. Opponents also fear that the merger will be a death knell for anti-GMO movements, as more and more of the seed industry falls into a few pro-GMO hands. So will the merger go through, or does our government still have a shred of independence from the corporate juggernaut? To talk to us about the merger and its consequences, we are joined from Florida by the co-host of the Ring of Fire radio show, Mike Papantonio. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. So, Mike, i got to ask you, you have a little bit of history with these companies. <laughs> what do you think led to Dow and DuPont merging? I mean, DuPont is over 200 years old, Dow over a century old. These companies have been through all sorts of economic challenges. What is it about today's economic climate that would make these two giants join together and create this, this tag team? Corporate criminals are simply trying to get better. That's the best play, way I can put it. Dow and DuPont have collectively, uh, people don't realize, they've been fined or sued more, almost more than any company operating in the United States. On top of that, they control, as you point out, about 17% of, well, 40% of the soy in, in corn production, but 17% of all global pesticides. They basically run the food supply for the industrialized world, not just the, not just the U.S., the entire world. This merger is going to give them unprecedented power over our way of life, which is it's going to allow them to get away with even more criminal activity. I, I have gone head to head with them. The first time I was in trial with them, the jury came back and uh, hit them for $300 million because they had killed so many people in West Virginia. I'm in trial with them right now. Uh, the last time we tried the, the, the very first case was just a few, uh, about a month ago. And the jury came back uh, against them again because uh, uh, DuPont had it, it entirely devastated a waterway by, by, by taking a toxin that they knew was toxic. This is how criminal this corporation is. They took a toxin they knew was, 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 was toxic, they knew it would cause cancer, and they dumped it into the Ohio River knowing it was moving into people's drinking water. Their documents were very clear to that. They understood every aspect of it, about it and decided to do it anyway. So I guess the quick answer is criminals attract criminals. And you have two criminal corporations that have been uh, crimes ranging from uh, uh, price fixing, tax evasion, environmental destruction, OSHA violations of every kind that you can imagine, poisoning entire cities with their toxic waste. That's just the short list of crimes. So it's the new, it is the new American corporate mentality, I guess is the best way to put it. It's pretty in incredible. Now, I got to ask, you know, as these companies grow like this, I, you know, I, are they less and less able to be, you know, reined in by government? government or oversight or citizens like is there going to be any rules for them as they get this big that is that is a, a brilliant question it is right in point when we started hearing too big to fail, corporate America looked at that as an invitation. You had uh, people like Eric Holder who would not prosecute anybody dressed up in an Armani suit. And so the rest of the corporation said, well, look, we're white collar criminals too. The bigger we get, the better it's going to be for us, the less of a target we become. And these are people who understand they are targets. In the 1990s, DuPont was hit with hundreds of lawsuits after a wave of reports that one of its fungicides was causing widespread environmental damage and, human, and, and damage to people. The company had to take a product off the market. They paid more than $500 million in compensation, and they were fined a mere $115 million, which was almost a month's worth of profit for that particular uh, product. So your point is excellent. The point is if they can, it's like a school of fish. When you see fish school up, they do that so they can look bigger. And it's, it's more difficult to penetrate that school of fish. And the same 
same thing is happening here. First of all, you have a Justice Department that is absolutely set on prosecuting every damn body in the world who smokes a, a weed, you know, who smokes weed, but on the other side is totally unwilling to go after white cro collar criminals. DuPont has, has been responsible for more toxic waste dumping than any company in the 1980s. In 1991, DuPont was fined $1.9 million for dumping acids and toxic solvents into New Jersey. And you know how much they saved by merely paying that $1.9 million? They saved billions because they passed the cleanup cost on to consumers. It's called, it's called externalizing costs. They don't pay for it. They let they let people pay for it by bad health and having to pay tax money to clean it up. DuPont and Dow operate exactly the same way. In 2000, DuPont agreed to pay $1.5 million to settle an EPA violations where they dumped more than 23,000 gallons of sulfuric acid into the air in Kentucky and put people in the hospital. But we have a Justice Department that doesn't look at a white, and this, Loretta Lynch is no, is no better, by the way. Everybody thinks, oh, Loretta Lynch, she's an African-American woman. She's simply going to feel our pain. No, Loretta Lynch comes from the same ilk. She comes from the same corporate entities that do so much harm to people every day and get away with it by paying a $1.5 million fine. That's very typical today. And your question is right on point. And I got to promise you something. Nobody else in the media is asking that question that you just asked. <laughs> Why did they do it? <laughs> the well, question is, that the, is the why question. we're here watching the Hawks, Mike. So I got to ask well, you. I, I got to ask you very quickly. Last question: What is being? Are you? If you're a betting man, give me the odds. What's the likelihood that this merger will go through, or will antitrust groups be able to push back? I think there's going to be major pushback, and I think the chances of it failing are great. I think it is a, a line in the sand where the activist groups must succeed. Otherwise, we are going to be one huge corporate uh, entity. Uh, North Pole to South Pole, the entire planet is going to be gobbled up the same way. Uh, it's pretty incredible stuff, especially when you see these giant corporations join forces arm in arm, you know, all for the sake of a buck. And, you know, like you, like you say, you know, it puts us, the little guy, uh, you know, at the bottom of the list. Man, I want to thank you very much for coming on today. The co-host of Ring of Fire Radio, Mike Papantonio, awesome, awesome analysis as always, my friend. Thanks, thanks for the invitation. Great show, by the way. Oh, Always. Oh, thank you, Mike. That's not why we have you on. We have you on because of your, uh, your brilliance, not just because you say good show all the time. But thank you very okay. much, man.